Welcome back to Reptilian Exotics. We are here in Ember's enclosure, my Asian water monitor. She is in her nesting box. They kind of go into like a trance while laying eggs. You don't want to disturb them. This here is really too much. I should not even be in here right now. I don't recommend it. And she did just become aware of me. So I'm gonna keep it really short. Sorry for the camera focusing in and out. It's just the different lighting. Now she was not paired with a male this time. This is probably gonna be a slug clutch. This is just what a female monitor goes through in their life. It's kind of like their monthly period. Well, I should say probably bi-monthly period. Um, they still will deposit and produce eggs for you. There went one. There's one. That one actually looks kind of good. Nah, too shiny. Maybe. I might give a few of them a shot at the incubator as I'm not sure if it's possible for them to retain the sperm. Um, I have heard of parthenogenesis clutches, meaning that some of the eggs will be fertile even without a male present. So anyway, that's why you always want to keep a lay box filled with substrate, topsoil, sand, uh, compost mix of about 18 inches to two feet deep for your female to deposit her eggs comfortably. If you get them and you know you find them in the back corner or in the walls or in the walls in the water you know, typically that's what we consider a scatter clutch. And after about three scatter clutches, it can really stress your female to where it can potentially kill them and cause illness or cause illness and kill them. So you all, if you own a female water monitor, definitely recommend if you can't fill the whole enclosure with deep substrate up to about knee high to get one of these hundred gallon water troughs uh, you can pick them up at tractor supply fill up pretty much to the brim with topsoil leaf compost with a bit of sand mixture I just use play sand um, anyway I think I'm gonna wrap this up just wanted to show you guys again. I'll probably do a little add-on to when I dig the eggs up tomorrow. It'll take her quite a bit of time here. So we're gonna leave her in peace. So until next time. Okay guys, so we're getting ready to show you how to set up Asian water monitor incubation tubs. I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail as I've had a lot of trial and error of what works and what works better. To me, I've tried both methods of like suspended egg incubation with the Sims containers. It does a good job. I actually prefer this method just for Asian water monitors. I'm gonna show you my method. I like to actually bury them in hatch right. Um, I'll show you guys the whole process here. We're going to pull some eggs. Some of them are, we're going to have a lot of slugs as I didn't pair this female, but she has been paired before. Uh, I was trying to give her a break, but it looked like we had some good eggs. I actually stole one last night in her trance. I pulled it out while she was laying. Um, so I kind of know right where they're at too. 
Uh, it looked like there was a few other good ones that we're going to go ahead and still try to incubate. As you see, my incubator is getting full of water monitor eggs. Um, we have some due to hatch out about December. It is October 9th, or October, it's November 9th. Um, so first step here is, now, this container here is a container large enough to hold this container. Now, there's water in this. This water is going to be, be set at about 87 degrees. I got it, it's at 90 now, but by the time I pull the eggs and stuff and get them set up, it'll, it'll lose a couple degrees. Uh, I put a hole here and a hole here for the big container. Right here and here. This is just for some, some air flow. Um, now in this container, there is only one hole and it's right here in the front. I'm going to go ahead and mark the date so I know what what is what. Okay, so 11, 8. And then I will put times so I know how many eggs is in there because they're going to be buried. So what I do is I use hatch right. And this stuff here, as you can see, is open. So I keep it sealed. I'm going to kind of use my hand and stir it up a bit so that it's not just the dryer, it's the portions on top. Stir it up. We're going to go ahead and set this down. You guys know what the hatch rate looks like, I'm sure. I'm going to fill this container. Hatchrite is already mixed. Sometimes you've got to add a little water to it if, you know, it's old or dries out or something. But typically it's the, the perfect mix. You don't have to go through the process of weighing water and all of that. So, we're not going to fill it completely full as I'm going to put eggs in there. And then I'm going to put another layer over top of the eggs. So let's go over here and dig some eggs. Let me get my container and my shovel. Ember is in here. Ember girl, there she is. Hey, you gonna be nice and let me get them eggs? Come here. Come on. Hey, Ember. Ember, no, now you, you be nice. She's moving really fast. Um, it's usually a sign of the female being protective over her nest. Come here, Ember. This might take me a second. As she's like a super calm, cool social monitor, so she's she knows I'm about to take her eggs. I think she don't want me to. Ember, you gotta let me have them eggs. They're not gonna do well in that tub. I do not recommend leaving your eggs in the tub to incubate themselves. You won't have very high success, if any at all. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely going to have to get her out of here. So first thing, I'm going to get back in here and remove the lid. Uh, come on, get on out of there, girl. Oh. And to the substrate down in there. She's got a ton of dirt on the top. Watch. Yep, she's getting irritable with me. You're all right, girl. That, that would freak me out, too. Somebody picking the lid. Come on. Actually, it's going to make it easier to pull her out, I think. Come on, Ember. Come on, girl. Oh, sorry about that. Come on. Let me give her a pet. 
wish I had a place to another enclosure that didn't have a monitor in it. No. We don't put you up here. No. Oh, not in the box. We're going to put you up here for a while, girl. Come on. You got to be nice and let me get them eggs. Okay. She's probably going to cause all kinds of havoc. Don't pay attention to her. Um, I want you guys to see the whole process of me getting eggs. Me put this in here. Hold that up for me a bit. Like I said, don't pay no attention to her. If you want to come around the back side of me here. Okay, so I know where the eggs are going to be. They're going to be right down in here. Is the lighting showing up? Yes. All right, you want to be careful. Very easily remove the dirt. Substrate, it's a sand topsoil mix. These 100% organic topsoil. And I also do leaf litter and compost uh, see there's one and that's gonna be a dud that's gonna be a dud egg there's probably gonna be quite a few we're gonna be lucky if we have any that are good I seen one good one and like I said I sold it from her right at the time of nesting another dud we was trying to give her a break just didn't seem right to breed her that much um, so I didn't pair the mail to her and she gives me eggs anyway. So my thing is, is they're going to produce eggs anyway, every other month. I might as well start just pairing the mail monthly because they're going to go through the whole process anyway. Let's dust some of that dirt back. There's some up there. slug another slug these are unfertilized eggs that's what I call slugs and a lot of other people who breed reptiles and let me take my hand off before I get down in here so I can see what I'm doing a little better ah right just put the light <clears throat> Okay, now there's what looks to be a good egg. It's a little odd shaped, I don't know for sure. Um, I would say that one definitely deserves the incubation time. So I'm gonna set this one to the side. I was gonna put them straight on the uh, hatch right, right now, but they're still dirty, I gotta wipe them off. Another slug. There's a bunch of them down in there. Let's hope that there's a, at least a few good ones. Be nice. It's always fun hatching water monitors. Even though I got an incubator full of them, never have too many. There's one that looks good. There, make sure it doesn't roll. There's another good looking type. So we got three, and then again, the one that I stole last night. Yeah, it's like a lot of duds. You have pretty good from deciphering what's a slug and what's a good egg at this point. In the beginning, it was kind of hard for me. I was trying to incubate, stuff like that. And this didn't get, ever get anywhere for a long time. 
but don't be discouraged. Just keep at it. And if your husbandry's right, and you're supporting your female, you'll get good eggs. That's probably about it. Um, I'm going to continue to dig through here. You can go ahead and give the camera a break. Alright, so after about 10 more minutes of digging and getting my hands all scuffed up from the dirt and taking 5 minutes to try to clean my nails and the dirt and stuff out of them, we're set up here. We have all the eggs out. I'm ready to put them into the incubation tub. Just imagine if I would have paired the male to her like I did with the other clutches. This is how large my clutches are, and this is actually a smaller one. It's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 eggs. And that's from an, uh, just a, you know, her cycle. Females are going to cycle with or without a male, whether you breed them or not. Um, I just lucked out and it looks like we got four good eggs out of the 22 from not even putting a male in there. So, uh, they can give you good eggs. It's called parthenogenesis without a male. It's where they pretty much produce within themselves, by themselves, to further their species as a whole like if there's no males around out in the wild they will still give you some good eggs and produce babies from here and there uh, i'm just wiping the dirt off of these um, i don't like to put them in the containers with all the dirt i always take a pen one second always take a pen and mark the way that they come out just so that I know what is right side up. I then place them in the hatch right, kind of like this. I don't know if you guys can see. Um, here's the one that I stole. You see how white it is compared to the others after she buries them in the dirt? Um, Push them down in there a bit because again I'm gonna cover them with some hatch right here in a minute. So I'm gonna put my mark, dust the dirt off, and again all of these might not be good even out of these four that I'm incubating, but I'm pretty confident that they are. So we're gonna incubate them. And this is a dry rag. Yes, yes, use a dry rag. You don't want any direct water or anything coming into contact with your eggs. It will cause mold, some other bacteria and stuff and give you, you'll lose the eggs in the incubation process. Don't get them too wet. Now these eggs typically take People say six months to even like nine months. Um, I've never had any run as long as nine months, but that's because I incubate at 86 degrees. Six months, I've never had happen that soon, that quick either. Uh, most of my hatchings are done about a, really it's almost like clockwork with this, this monitor here. Her eggs usually hatch at 80, yeah, at 86 degrees. Um, at about 195 days. Now what I'm doing is just sprinkling a little extra hatch right over the top. Now in a few weeks I'll come in and check on them. I'll unbury them. And if they're bad, yeah, see I just, I want them covered. I don't want it totally you know, uh, 
overwhelming the egg with too much. I just put a thin layer on top to kind of keep the condensation from falling off of this tub as it will build up condensation and the hatch right catches it. Um, again, here we go. We're going to set them inside here. Now you also want to make sure that where you have this hole and you're putting it in the second container of water that when you put the lid on top to enclose this container into this one that the water level doesn't raise above and flood your egg incubation uh, chamber because I have had that happen in the beginning too and you don't want to flood your eggs out. So we're going to check this now and that's at 88. That's, that's okay, it's a bit warm but it will cool down. Um, so what I'm going to do here now is push on the side and see that's a little too much water. If I push that all the way down it's going to flood, flood my egg chamber. So I'm going to empty some of this water out. It takes a little bit. There we go. That hard to do it. Snap this on. Yep, see? Now it's not flooding my incubation chamber. I'm also going to put the date on the front of this one as well. 11. 8, we'll say, because it was actually laid last night in times 4, because that's how many eggs are in there. And this is my incubator. I made this myself. Um, it's hooked up to a V Electronics thermostat at uh, 200 so that it pulsates right at 86 degrees. Um, I also have a fan down here to kind of circulate the air. As you can see, I got my coming eye eggs, six of them uh, going. It's in here. I'm waiting on another clutch from her now. There's like 26, 27 eggs there, and I got 26 incubating here. And that's that was my experiment with the Sims. They're doing good. Uh, again, I just I really prefer this method for water monitors. You know, to each your own. Sims are awesome containers for pretty much everything else. I just have better results myself um, doing it this way but to, to each your own like I said I use Sims containers on all of my other species just Asian water monitors I do the uh, buried in hatch right method with the second container of water um, but anyway next week hopefully we'll be pulling Miyagi's eggs her, her uh, this will be her third clutch of eggs that she'll be giving us and she was paired to a male so we should have a lot more better like fertile eggs versus you know all of these slugs over here but as I told you before like I have so many water monitors of the normal Sri Lanka to Sumatran type that I wanted to give her a break and heck she gave me eggs anyway she said I don't need that male you know I'm gonna give you guys some babies so you know um, Till next time, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It means a lot to us and it helps support, hopefully it will help support what we're doing here at Reptilian Exotics. I plan to hopefully someday open up like a, a zoo type thing for our retired breeders and stuff versus just, you know, keeping them in their breeding pens, giving them the space and stuff that they deserve. We, we have some big plans here, Reptilian Exotics. We don't know what the future holds, but stay tuned because I know we got a lot of good stuff in the future. So, until next time, see you guys.